All right, last chapter, acids and bases. I'm going to give you guys definitions for acids and bases. Um, if you ask someone who's never had chemistry before what's an acid, they might tell you a lemon. Uh, yep, a lemon is acidic, but what is a definition for an acid? Uh, there are several different definitions. In this class, we're going to go through two of them, the Irenaeus definition and the Bronsted-Lowry definition. So what is the Irenaeus definition? This is how you spell Irenaeus, by the way. An Irenaeus acid is a hydrogen-containing compound, so it has to contain a hydrogen, that in water produces hydrogen ions. Okay, a hydrogen ion is H+. And an Irenaeus base is a hydroxide-containing compound. Remember the polyatomic ion hydroxide. A hydroxide-containing compound that in water produces hydroxide ions. So, an example of an acid, according to the Irenaeus definition, would be HCl. So, we'll say hydrochloric acid. And then in water, you could either put water over the arrow, or you could just write an AQ down here, which would mean that it is dissolved in water. It's an aqueous solution. Um, I'll just put H2O over here. So, HCl in water will break apart, dissociate into a hydrogen ion that's aqueous plus a chloride ion that's aqueous. Okay, so by definition, this would be an acid. Obviously, if you have something like this, it's not an acid. Or something like this, not an acid. Why not? Because it has to ha contain a hydrogen, and this does not contain a hydrogen. All right. What about the Irenaeus definition of a base? Irenaeus definition of a base has to be a hydroxide containing substance. So sodium hydroxide would be considered an Irenaeus base. In water, it's going to dissociate, this one ionizes, this one dissociate, it's going to dissociate pr to produce a sodium ion aqueous and a hydroxide ion aqueous. So because we see this hydroxide ion, that makes this sodium hydroxide a base, okay? Which is a very nice definition and it's used a lot. However, it doesn't cover certain compounds. For example, Ammonia, cleaning solution, that's pretty basic. So ammonia is considered a base. But according to Irenaeus' definition, a base is a hydroxide-containing substance. So according to Irenaeus, this is a base, but I'm telling you right now, it is a base. So we need a different definition to account for some of these issues that we are going to come across. And the one we use the most, the definition we use the most, is the Bronsted-Lowry definition of acids and bases. Bronsted-Lowry states that an acid is a substance that can donate a proton a proton is just a hydrogen ion, guys. That's what a, a hydrogen ion is. It is a proton. Because think of it, a hydrogen atom is one proton, one electron. No neutrons. If it becomes an ion, it loses an electron. What's left? Well, it was only one proton, one electron. If it lost an electron, then the hydrogen ion is just a proton. Okay? So an acid is a substance that can donate a proton to another substance. Okay? And there's no mention of water. So you don't have to have water there for it to behave as an acid. Okay? So long as it's something that has a hydrogen and it can donate it as a hydrogen ion or a proton, that's considered an acid. Okay? A base is a substance that can accept a proton. So this is a bit of a different definition than uh, the Irenaeus. It can accept a proton, 
remember, a hydrogen ion, from another substance. Okay? So acids donate protons, bases accept protons. So let me show you how we're going to do this. Let's say I have HCl plus water. Again, it doesn't have to be water. We're going to do a lot of other examples where water is not involved, but let me just show you what's happening here. Okay, so we want this to behave as an acid. So according to Bronsted-Lowry, it has to donate a proton. Who's it going to donate a proton to? It's going to donate a proton to the water. So if water is going to accept a proton, according to Bronsted-Lowry, the water would be considered a base because it's accepting a proton. Okay, let me show you how the water accepts a proton. Water, if you remember from previous chapters, looks like this, okay? So it has two lone pairs. If this HCl is going to donate a proton, this hydrogen ion can come here and use these two electrons to form a coordinate covalent bond because it has no electrons, but it can use both these electrons to form the bond. So we end up having three hydrogens. This is called the hydronium polyatomic ion. Hydronium ion. Okay? So the H plus is going to go to the H2O. It's going to make the water H3O plus. Okay? So then what's left over? You had an H plus and a Cl minus, so the Cl minus is left over. Okay? So that shows how Bronsted-Lowry is defined. An acid is a substance that donates a proton. A base is a substance that accepts a proton. Okay, let's try ammonia now. Here's ammonia in water. Okay, so we want ammonia to be a base. Remember? We said ammonia is basic. So that means it needs to pick up a proton. Well, guess who's going to give it the proton? This guy. So if this is going to donate a proton here, then, then this guy now is an acid. Look at water. It can do both. It can act as an acid and it can act as a base. And we're going to talk about the meaning of that, the significance of that, a little later on in the chapter. So right now, let me show you how ammonia can pick up a proton. Ammonia... If you look at its Lewis structure, its trigonal pyramidal, it has one lone pair, okay? Now, if the hydrogen ion is going to come from the water and go to the ammonia, hydrogen ion is going to come here. Just like with the hydronium ion, there's a lone pair here. It's going to form a coordinate covalent bond, and look what we end up getting. We get the ammonium polyatomic ion. Anytime you have that extra hydrogen ion there, it's coming with its positive charge. So, the water is going to donate a hydrogen ion to the ammonia. Here, the HCl donated a hydrogen ion to the water. Okay? So, when the ammonia picks up the hydrogen ion, it becomes the ammonium polyatomic ion. And what's left over? If you have an H and an OH, the H went away, H plus went away, the electron was left behind, you end up with a hydroxide polyatomic ion. So what became of the ammonia? The ammonia became the ammonium ion. What became of the water? The water became the hydroxide ion, okay? Some new terms we're going to learn now. Whatever is left over of the acid after it donates a proton is called, like this guy here, it's called the conjugate base. And whatever becomes of the base after it picks up a proton this is called the conjugate acid, OK? 
Okay, so I'm going to link the two here. This is the acid, and this is its conjugate base. This is the base, and this is its conjugate acid. Okay, so the HCl and the Cl minus is one pair. They call it a conjugate acid base pair. The H2O and the H3O plus, that's another conjugate acid base pair. Let this sink in. All right, let's take a look at these things down here. Ammonia picked up, picked up a proton from the water. What did the ammonia become? The ammonia became the ammonium ion. Look, they differ by just one proton here. This was the base. Guess what this is called? This is called the conjugate acid. Conjugate acid. The water and the hydroxide, they differ by one proton. When the water gave its proton to the ammonia, what was left over? The hydroxide. So this hydroxide, this is the conjugate base. Oh, yeah, conjugate base. Because this was the acid, this is the conjugate base. This is the base, this is the conjugate acid. So what are the pairs? Ammonia with the ammonium ion is one conjugate acid base pair. And the water with the hydroxide ion is another conjugate acid base pair. We'll practice some more in the next video, okay?